Hey guys, Mike here. Um, one of the people in the um, comment section of YouTube asked if I would do a video explaining how to configure uh, NetFlow on a FortiGate. So, and that's actually pretty easy. It's hidden in the CLI, but it's it's fairly straightforward. Once you once you do it, it kind of clicks, right? So, um, but for those of you that don't know, um, NetFlow is a networking feature. Um, Originally, it was introduced by Cisco, and its sole purpose was to collect and export uh, information about traffic flows on routers, and you know it's useful for firewalls and everything else as well. There's a lot of cool tools that use NetFlows to build their stuff. For instance, um, Cisco's StealthWatch is actually able to look at you know software-defined networking and Cisco's DNA and their fabric and all that and actually tell what ports are being overutilized, underutilized, etc. <clears throat> but anyways, this it's available on the FortiGate. It's very usable. Um, it'll provide you a lot of information if you have a collector that's able to actually do things the way you want it. So um, jump right in and uh, we'll cover it. So as I said, you have to be um, logged in via the CLI to do this. And I'm logged into my little Forti Wi-Fi 61E and uh, to do it, you just do config system netflow, and you can do a git, and you'll see the selections that it has right here. So, collector IP, that's pretty self-explanatory, right? That's the IP of the collector that's looking. Um, collect or the collector that you're sending it to. Collector port, that's the port that that collector is listening on. Um, the source IP, this is the IP of the FortiGate that you wish to send the NetFlow from. Um, so, you know, if, you, if you're following things on your on your NetFlow device and you're saying only things that end with .ten should be sending to me, you, you know, you could set it and standardize it and all that. Uh, your active flow timeout, that's your time in minutes of timeout to report active flows. And in your... Um, Inactive flow time hours is just the inverse of that. Yeah, it's a time in seconds <clears throat> for a periodic report of finished flows. And you have your your template time out and things like that. These four you can leave as is. The for most users, the only thing that's really going to be interesting is these top three: uh, the collector you want to send to, the port you want to send to, and then the source IP you want to. So, for instance, this one would probably be. 10.100.100.20 because that's that's the device's internal IP and then you know whatever ports I don't have a collector on my actual network though so that's not going to give me a whole lot and then you just you know you set those settings and you go to end and of course <clears throat> if you have um, a device that has multiple VDOMs you can set NetFlows based on the VDOM and that command is just config system uh, VDOM NetFlow, which this particular device doesn't have uh, VDOMs enabled, so it's not going to be a whole lot of benefit there. So, um, but yeah, um, CLI driven. So uh, it it goes back to reiterating, the GUI is nice. GUI makes things easy and click click done. But the more you know about the command line interface, the much easier and the much faster your life will be, right? So uh, dive in if you have a NetFlow appliance that you want to send NetFlows to. That's how you configure it. Uh, you know, just config system NetFlow and let it ride. Play with it. See what kind of cool information you can pull from it. And I can pretty much guarantee you that your life is going to get a lot easier if you continue down that path. Um, I have an instance where we have big time 7060E chassis FortiGates go into Cisco StealthWatch for NetFlows and it's pro providing so much information it's given us visibility that we could only dream up before so it's awesome but yeah um, any questions just hit up the comments below um, otherwise you guys have a good day